Well, Hollywood actor Anne Hathaway recently opened up about the career cliffs she faced as she edged closer to the age of 35. But in true Devil Wears Prada fashion, her work is far from over, landing the lead in her most recent film at the age of 41. So to tell us more on how we can cite and avoid career cliffs, we're joined by workplace expert Sue Elson from Adelaide. Hey Sue, how hey, are you? Great to see you. This career cliff, what is that? How do we avoid that? Well, it's basically a sudden or unexpected change in your career progression. So obviously with Anne Hathaway, she was told that at 35 things would change, but it could be because you start working part time, because you start a family, because you move, because you've got health issues, you might decide to have a career change. So to avoid it, you're really going to have to manage and plan your career and make sure you've got some backup plans in place. But interestingly, the Workplace Gender Equality Agency has found that 30% of women work part-time and only 7% are managerial roles. So they're actually mm. quite high at risk there we, well. we speak often about the career cliff that women um, often face when they do mm. take time to have a baby um, and care for children. Does this also apply to men, though? It does, and obviously... Unfortunately, here in Australia, still 96% of women are taking on that primary or usual caregiving role. And I often say to people, you know, women will give you nine months' notice before they're going to leave. Mm. And if a man takes on a job of looking after the children, oh, isn't that fantastic? And a woman is just at home cooking muffins. So there's a bit of a perception in the workplace. But anybody who's going to make those transitions runs the risk of facing those career cliffs. Mm. Right, Talk then about motherhood. More mums are opting mm. for part-time work than ever before. So is it possible to keep building your career even if you're cutting back the hours? Well, you've got to be really clear on career management skills. So a lot of people know how to do a job. They don't know how to get a job. And so this is really about making sure that you've developed skills, that you keep you up to date, that you maintain your networks. You don't try and do a full-time job in part-time hours. You've got to be really mm. clear on setting those boundaries. And the other thing is you're going to have to play a little bit of politics on occasion because you're going to have to keep people informed as to your commitment and also what you're actually achieving. And you're going to have to speak up about that. What if you are at a position where you are changing industries or careers altogether? Mm. What are your tips there? Well, don't try and do it in two weeks. Yeah. As a general rule, I recommend a general transition of about two years. And that sounds like a terribly long time, but it actually gives you time to develop your skills and get some experience. Make sure it's really the area that you'd like to go into. But also remember that you can speak to a career specialist and they'll be able to give you some pathways into it. So, for example, you might be able to do a short course that's funded. You don't necessarily have to go back to formal right. education for three to five years. You might be able to get a referral into a place and take up some options there as well. well what about moving cities or states or you know have been countries how, how can you avoid falling off that cliff? Mm. Yes, look, when people move countries, it can take up to two years to be in an equivalent level position to what they were in their mm. previous location. So they do need to do that research before they arrive. They need to network. Ideally, if they can find a local mentor that can help them with that networking, and if all else fails and they need to get some Australian experience, do some part-time work that pays the bills, but also consider doing some voluntary work in that area of expertise so that you can build up that local Australian experience. And and even mention the fact that you worked in a pizza shop. That's still Australian experience that people <laughs> value. What if you are just simply feeling like your career may have stalled or perhaps in the current role you're in, you can't see a clear path for progression? What do mm. we do about that? Well, again, first of all, don't panic. I mean, there's lots of opportunities around and you really can, again, ask for help to make that transition and plan those steps that you're going to take. Some people just talk to their friends and family, but they don't necessarily have the greatest range of options available to you and they might stereotype you into a particular type of role. Mm. But for those of you who are not sure about you know, I, I need to earn money now, consider working close to home. So it might be a job for now, but because you're working close to home, it meets some of those other requirements of, of work and life. Sue, great advice again. Good to see you, mate. Take care. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Coming up